Hello YouTube. This is my second video on the Lyman Gen 6 electronic powder dispenser. This is the unit set up, uh, powered on, and uh, it's gone through its three minute warm up cycle. And it's been sitting in the garage here for, I don't know, about the last hour or so. Uh, usually it's a good idea to let the scales get acclimated to the temperature. Uh, the ambient temperature it gives you a much more accurate read and they tend to drift less So I'm going to show you in this in this video how to calibrate the Lyman Gen 6 scale And I'm going to compare I'm going to show you some comparisons of the weight thrown versus a weight read on the Gem, Gem Pro 250 Okay, so here we have a close-up of the Lyman Gen 6 scale and before we want to start using it, we'll need to calibrate the scale. That's easily done. First thing you're going to do is remove your dust cover, of course. I'm going to remove the tray, and you're going to zero the scale. There's a Cal Zero button. You press it, and the scale is zeroed. The next thing you're going to do is press and hold the Cal button. It'll say Cal 50. You take your 50 gram weight from its uh, holder gingerly place it on the load cell, and then hit the cow button again. Once it's completed its cow cycle, it'll say zero. Of course, when you remove the 50 gram weight, it should read 771.6, which is 50 grams uh, in grains. So then we'll want to cow the, uh, zero the scale again. And place our tray on it. Get another zero on there. And we're pretty much ready to go. At this point, we can start dialing in our powder weight and throwing our powder and uh, putting it into our cases. Okay, what we've got is the Lyman Gen 6 close up next to our Gem Pro 250. And the Gem Pro 250 gives me a, a much more uh, accurate read on on what the weight is of uh, my powder weight um, than the Lyman will. It's the Lyman's only to the tenth of a grain. This will read two to three hundredths of a grain. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw 20 grains out of the Gen 6 and we'll measure it up against the Gem Pro 250. We've got H1000 powder. It's a long stick powder in the uh, in the reservoir and I've got the restrictor plug uh, inserted. You need to use the restrictor plug when you have long grain powder. Uh, it keeps the uh, throws a lot more consistent than if you had the plug out. It's quicker if you have the plug out, but uh, the throws aren't as consistent. Similar, uh, the charge master usually want to stick a McDonald's dry here in the end of it to make sure that it, it'll throw a more accurate th uh, charge with stick powder. So I've set 20.0 grains. I'll hit enter. And uh, this is not going to take too long. You know, 338 Lapua with 90 some odd grains of powder, this can take a little while, but usually it's done throwing by the time I'm ready to, to charge another case and seed another bullet. So here we've thrown 20 grains and it will, after the beep, it'll actually show uh, what it measures out to. Rather than just getting stuck at 20, it'll, the, the scale will will read the charge. It says 19.9. That's within the plus or minus one tenth of a grain uh, uh, advertisement on the scale. We'll move it over to the Gem Pro over here. We'll see what it reads. 19.88. So it's one, it's two hundredths of a grain low, lower than 19.9. So usually, and this is what I found in practice, that the scale will throw short. It won't throw, won't throw short all the time, but when it doesn't hit its, uh, its target load, it normally throws sh short. It doesn't overcharge very often at all. Okay, reads 20, it beeps, and then the scale will go live again, and it'll tell us, well, this time it tells us that it's dead on 20. So I'm going to move that over to the Gem Pro here and double check. And it's 20.404 grains. So it's pretty darn close. 0 0.04 grains is usually one kernel of H1000. So if I knocked one kernel out, uh, I'd probably, then let me try that real quick. 
I'd probably be dead on at 20 grains. I think I knocked two grains of powder out of there. Yeah, I knocked two grains loose. So, you know, H1000 powder is pretty heavy. It does meter well out of these things. Um, now, I'm going to show you the auto repeat function. You hit auto repeat. You'll see auto repeat on the bottom of the screen. You hit your 20, 20 grains, enter. It'll dispense the 20 grains. And when I'm done with, when it's done dispensing, I'll charge the case, I'll throw the tray back on, and you'll see that it'll just start tossing the next one at 20 grains. So let's go ahead and measure this. And it measures 19.92, again, with intolerance. And I would probably trickle in a couple of grains to make it an even 20. Uh, I'll throw the tray back there, and boom. And it's gonna start pouring again. And so this is why most people will get one of these, or one of these uh, automatic dispensers like that, because those of us that are used to, used to using spoons, or maybe a, you know a rotary powder throw to get as close and then trickle in the rest, you know, it's, it's very time consuming. I do trickle in to make sure that I'm at 20. I'm shooting a 338 Lapua at very long distances, so I wanna make sure my powder charges are as accurate as possible. But this gets me so close that normally what I'll end up doing is I'll only trickle one or two kernels of powder to get me, uh, to get me dead on at uh, whatever my charge weight uh, is. So this one is 19.98, uh, you know, two hundredths off of 20 grains. Really the Lyman is, is it's, it's a huge time saver. It's less expensive than the others. Uh, it doesn't give you the memory functions, like I said in my last video. But usually, you see how quick it is to set the charge, the desired charge weight. And most of us have our charge loads written down on labels or in books. Um, uh, you see, there's a little kernel of powder. That's probably what's throwing my... There we go. We usually have them written down somewhere so that... Yeah, the memory function really isn't all that important and I, I you know I would probably I'd probably even if I had a unit that had a memory function I'd probably not use it you know I just I'm more comfortable uh, with my uh, with my notes uh, I know they're good and uh, you know I'll just use those instead well I'm gonna go answer that phone and uh, I'll show you how to empty this thing well, there you have it. I, you know, I'm going to do a separate video on cleaning the, uh, the scale. Uh, there's a lot of intricate steps in there uh, in order to make sure that you properly disassemble the, the, uh, the scale for cleaning. And I wanted to make sure that I have enough time uh, to adequately cover uh, all the idiosyncrasies of the scale and, and how best to take it apart. Uh, but what you did see was you saw us uh, uh, calibrate the scale. Uh, we threw a 20 grain charge and measured it back and forth. Uh, it, it, it's, it's really, it's pretty darn accurate. You know, it, it, it's well, you know, it is within its plus or minus one tenth of a grain uh, uh, promise on the box. And uh, it throws, uh, as you saw, it throws, it throws charges really, really close. Very seldom does it throw over. Usually throws a little bit under. Uh, for those of us that want every little bit, you know, you want to get down to the kernel, you're still going to probably trickle in a couple, uh, one or two kernels to get that desired weight. But we're only talking about one or two kernels that you got to trickle in uh, to get your desired weight. For those that are just making, uh, for those that are making uh, uh, loads for 100 yard loads or plinking loads or, uh, you know, even hunting uh, loads and they don't that don't necessarily need that much uh, accuracy in the powder charge I'd be comfortable taking this you know just pouring uh, pouring the charge uh, that it's reading anyways that's uh, that's the gen 6 in operations really simple scale easy easy to use easy to set up throws quick and accurate charges um, it's a great addition to my bench. My bench isn't very big and it really doesn't take up that much space. You see it next, sitting there next to the Gem Pro 250. That's not very large and, uh, you know, it doesn't take, it doesn't have a very big footprint. So I really do like it. Uh, again, I'm going to make another video on how to clean the scale, which can be a little, uh, uh, it can be a little tricky. 
Uh, it takes a little more time than maybe, uh, you know, from the videos that I saw with the Charge Master. It certainly takes a little more time to clean it than that. But uh, it's not terribly difficult to do. And once you get used to doing it, it really doesn't take that much time at all. All right, well, until then, uh, leave uh, comments uh, below there. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, you know, I'll try to, I'll try to get those, uh, I'll try to get some responses or maybe even some videos out for that. Thank you.